2 Peter chapter 1 in the Passion Translation. Introduction and Greeting This letter is from Simeon Peter, a loving servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ. I am writing to those who have been given a faith as equally precious as ours through the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. May grace and perfect peace cascade over you as you live in the rich knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. God's Generous Grace Everything we could ever need for life and godliness has already been deposited in us by His divine power. For all this was lavished upon us through the rich experience of knowing Him who has called us by name and invited us to come to Him through a glorious manifestation of His goodness. As a result of this, He has given you magnificent promises that are beyond all price, so that through the power of these tremendous promises, we can experience partnership with the divine nature by which you have escaped the corrupt desires that are of the world. Faith's Ladder of Virtue So, devote yourselves to lavishly supplementing your faith with goodness, and to goodness add understanding. And to understanding, add the strength of self-control. And to self-control, add patient endurance. And to patient endurance, add godliness. And to godliness, add mercy toward your brothers and sisters. And to mercy toward others, add unending love. Since these virtues are already planted deep within, and you possess them in an abundant supply, they will keep you from being inactive or fruitless in your pursuit of knowing Jesus Christ more intimately. But if anyone lacks these things, he is blind, constantly closing his eyes to the mysteries of our faith, and forgetting his innocence for his past sins have been washed away. For this reason, beloved ones, be eager to confirm and validate that God has invited you to salvation and claimed you as his own. If you do these things, you will never stumble. As a result, the kingdom's gates will open wide to you as God choreographs your triumphant entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Messiah. Divine Revelation I won't hesitate to continually remind you of these truths. Even though you are aware of them, and are well established in the present measure of truth you have already embraced. And as long as I live, I will continue to awaken you with this reminder, since our Lord Jesus, the Anointed One, has clearly revealed that my departure is near. Indeed, I'm passionate to share these things with you, so that you will always remember them after my exodus from this life.
Jesus' transfiguration. We were not retelling some masterfully crafted legend when we informed you of the power and appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. For we saw His magnificence and splendor unveiled before our very eyes. Yes, Father God lavished upon Him radiant glory and honor when His distinct voice spoke out of the realm of majestic glory, endorsing Him with these words, This is my cherished Son, marked by my love. All my delight is found in Him. And we ourselves heard that voice resound from the heavens while we were with Him on the holy mountain. Prophecy And so we have been given the prophetic word, the written message of the prophets, made more reliable and fully validated by the confirming voice of God on the Mount of Transfiguration. And you will continue to do well if you stay focused on it. For this prophetic message is like a piercing light shining in a gloomy place until the dawning of a new day when the morning star rises in your hearts. You must understand this at the outset. Interpretation of scriptural prophecy requires the Holy Spirit, for it does not originate from someone's own imagination. No true prophecy comes from human initiative, but is inspired by the moving of the Holy Spirit upon those who spoke the message that came from God.